which is not the original engine for this generation. Correct. Correct. No. It would have only been available carbureted. So this is the uh, fuel injected 22 RE motor, again from a 1987 Toyota 4Runner. And I use the complete 4Runner wiring harness um, all the way from headlight to taillight, the engines tied it into the instrument cluster, the wipers, everything. So, Right, so that made it a priority to get the engine management to work easily with the engine and then you would rather have struggled with you know doing all the you can see like splices and everything yeah. here and there to, to get the non-essential stuff the, the most essential thing is a good running engine correct yep yeah. and that was important to have the fuel injection because uh, a lot of guys have issues with the carbureted engines when they get to hill climbing and they flood out or stall and uh, I didn't want to have those kind of reliability issues when I was playing in the rocks and that makes sense. Hills. So when you're at extreme angles, this thing will just keep chugging along. Yep, exactly. And then again, you can see the upgraded master cylinder that yeah, I just that. installed. That, that's for like the, uh, the newest, shiniest thing on this truck. Yes. Yep. That again was the, uh, that's a one inch bore master cylinder from the uh, 95 Forerunner V6 to go with the upgraded brakes. Um, and that bolts keep right up to the, the, the stock booster. Oh, that is actually the 87 Forerunner booster as well. Oh, so. okay. It's it's I literally bought the truck as a cab and a frame and uh, and kind of built from there with pieces that I've had or purchased along the way. Excellent. Thirty seven, twelve, fifty, seventeens. Goodyear, Wrangler, mud trains, and then you you came up with this, Andy. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it somewhere. Dual shackle setup. Yeah. Dual made. shackles. For the extended so, drop. So travel. when the weight's on it and it's just regular, this is fully up here. Yeah. Rides against the bump stop. And then it just works as a regular Acts like a normal suspension. Yeah. Those are Chevy 63 inch long, Chevy half ton pickup leaf springs. Chevy half ton leaf springs. From like what, what year Chevy? 88 to 98 Chevy half ton. Okay. And then Toyota axles with 529 gears. 529 gear. Welded differentials front and rear. That's very important. The welded diff. Gives you full, all the full, traction. Full locked means you're not getting stuck. No. Wait, when you do get stuck, you're really stuck. Yeah. Okay. Custom yeah, rear bumper. Self-built rear bumper. With uh, a hitch on there. You're never going to tow anything with this. No. Okay. It's just a tow re recovery point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can put a hook in it and get pulled yeah. out yeah. for when you really get stuck? Yes. I like how simple it looks. There's, like, nothing back here. No. Extremely simplified. Fuel cell is up in the box, so you don't have anything hanging under here to get damaged. Oh, that's excellent. Yep. That's not stock, is it? That cross member piece? Uh, no. Somebody had welded that in before I okay. received the truck. So. so then in the midsection here, it gets really interesting. We have a home-built transmission cross member holding up a dual transfer case setup. Utilizing two stock Toyota transfer cases. So you have so you have the engine into a manual transmission, and then what is this one? That's your manual transmission. Back this to this is your first transfer case or gear reduction unit. Then a second this gear is reduction one you unit. Added. This yep. is the stock one. The rear one is the stock one. Yep. So this is an adapter plate. Correct. Made by Trail Gear. Trail Gear adapter plate, so you can put two tra transfer cases in line. Correct. So you go effectively even... double your low range gearing for rock crawling abilities. And again, that's great because you have a, a four cylinder in this with not a lot of power, and you have big wheels. Correct. So you can go crazy low gearing. It gives you power. What are the front leaf springs? The front leaf springs are a set of um, Toyota independent suspension truck rear leaf springs from a 1987 Toyota 4Runner. And we've had to add a couple of leafs to the pack to support the extra weight of an engine being on the front of the vehicle instead of the rear. Oh, right, yeah, because they're not as heavy duty in the back because Toyotas aren't meant to haul anything in the beds. Correct. Gotcha. Then we've utilized the uh, Toyota IFS 
front hubs, and then uh, 95 Toyota 4Runner V6 front calipers. So upgraded four piston calipers. Yep. The hub is off from the independent the front independent suspension front suspension Toyota, and they mate yeah. to the solid axle. Yep. The wheel bearings are the same, but it offsets the wheel mounting surface outward by an inch and a half. Nice. Give you a wider track stance, make Excellent. it more stable. Yeah. And all this information is like you can find the stuff online, right? This is it's yep. not like you. Invented all this. This has all been done. I have not reinvented the wheel. This is all pretty cut and dry. Toyota and then this isn't stuff. stock steering either. That's a trail gear crossover steering setup. Made to get the tie rods up away from the front of the axle so they don't get damaged. You bump them against something. Right. So then again, I know it's bright out, but like there's nothing hanging down. You got the axles. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. So that's if you hit something, it's going it. to be the axles. Pretty much, yeah. And then you had to... I'm noticing this too. Is this? I reinforced the factory front spring mounting perch. Okay, yeah, because that's pushed out. Welded out. it all to the bumper so that they don't. Uh, they're notorious for ripping off of the frame. And that's not going to happen weak here. Weak welds. No, I've welded and reinforced all that. Fabricated my own bumper with, again, toe mounting points, half inch thick plate steel that's welded inside the frame. Back in four inches to give you a good solid recovery points. And again, a receiver in the front for a recovery point or to use later for a receiver mounted style winch. Excellent. Can be put on the front of the back. And then it has the 1979 round headlight style grill and headlight package on it. Yeah, as well, well as the 79 doors, which have no vet windows in them. And the 79 box, which uses the old school, like, uh, toolbox style latches to hold it shut. Yeah, I love the patina on this thing. It's... So we'll, we'll get some uh, more video of that, too. They started the tip. You're tucked over on this side and you're barely lifted you have on. No weight on that side. Yeah, you're lifting it. You're like air gapping it. Oh, dude, that tire stuck right in that box side, doesn't it? Yeah. What size are these pit bulls? These what are. What size are your tires, Chris? 42. Those are 42s. I can tell you got a lot more air in yours than I do mine. Oh, yeah. I got like 17, 18 pounds in them. It's a long way off the drive. Don't get out. It'll probably flip over. <laughs> it might. Tyler is so pounded. 